peace to the saints. Today we are analyzing the debate, and we'll see if it even was a debate, between Candace Owens and Destiny, the video game player, the professional video game player. And we'll see what their strategies were, what their argumentative points were, and you know, see who triumphed and where the truth stands in all of the talking. Per usual, let us begin with our tradition, which is show love to those who show love to you. May I acknowledge. Shout out to Joseph, comes in by Cash App, sending in tuition. May I also acknowledge Marcos, writes, peace to the saints, tuition. Shout out to Noel, who just purchased the Master Communicator course. And there'll be even more content going up for the Master Communicator course, including debate and argumentative tactics and strategy. So keep an eye out for that. I also acknowledge Elias, who just uh, got his ticket for the Book of Dark Truths Summit. May I also acknowledge Mr. Chapman. He writes, aside from Candace pointing out that molestomy is age 35, promoting degenerate childish behavior and being a contrarian for views, my favorite part of this is minute 55, 50 seconds when he shows his true ignorance of reality thinking that poor people go to college completely free. Peace to the saints. You know what? I've actually seen a clip of that one, Mr. Chapman. And it was comical because it lets you know how disconnected some of these snot-nosed persons are. And also it lets you know that he, in fact, did not grow up poor, which is there's no merit to growing up poor. But yeah, he's a, a delusional sophist who pretends to be an intellectual and anyone who would believe him to be intelligent or competent is quite silly. I mean, if you can't take a music degree at a third rate college, then clearly you're not a studious person. The only thing he excels in is his ability to connive, trick and scan. He is in fact an idler. Thank you for sharing that piece. I also acknowledge Nathaniel sends intuition shout out to Melvin supporting the work as well. I also acknowledge Charlie writes peace to the saints. Carrying on. Shout out to Fat Daddy. Oh, it looks like the technology is having some trouble. There we go. Shout out to Fat Daddy. Let's go ahead and get into this work, ladies and saints. Per usual, please confirm that the audio is coming in clearly from the video. Here we go. They are not the most literate. You think people that graduate because, with college yes. degrees can't read well? Yeah, I, what I'm telling you is yes. I must concede that even his tonation is quite disgusting. It reminds me of those uh, transformers when they're trying to you know, fake the voice of a woman and they get caught in between, you know, in between a man and a woman's voice. It's w really a pain to listen to. That's what I'm telling you. They're not the most literate. We're, what would I look up we to are verify not, that are, if I wanted to see like... You got to do, do the research in your I own time. I have done the research. Okay, I'm, I'm ha the sad reality is neither of these persons are bright. Neither of them are pursuing any greater purpose other than their financial gain. And it's a pity that uh, we even have to listen to these two goofballs. Those of you who are familiar with Candace Owens would know that she started off as a serious liberal. Then she realized she could make more money and get more recognition as a conservative. Why? Because there are fewer outspoken black female conservatives. So she switched sides, which lets you know she's really not on any side. She's just on the side of what uh, earns her a dollar. Happy to, not true. What do you What do you mean? It's not true. And I'm going to tell you. Okay, I, no, hold I'm going to tell you. Let me explain. Let me explain. Because I've done a lot of research on college degrees and a lot of research. So this is a funny thing. Just imagine a guy who dropped out on a music degree talking about, I've done a lot of research on college degrees. I've done a lot of research. Oh, really? Are, are you a PhD? Did you do a, a master's thesis on this? Like you did a postdoc on this? No, you didn't. Um, you're lying. I don't believe you at all. No. education and every single thing that you're saying sounds really good on like a culture war perspective but when you look at an war. actual economic perspective when you look at actual i'm trying to figure out how is it possible to have absolutely no base in your voice as a man like how do you achieve that that is quite extraordinary but one thing we have to consider when he's making these claims i've done a lot of research uh, these are the things that we have to say you know pause and i don't think candace is going to be able to do this because she's not the brightest star in the sky but when he says something like, I've done a lot of research on this, that's when you say, okay, well, hold on one second. 
is there a paper you can reference? And let's pull up the paper and let's go through a couple lines of that paper and then we'll look at your works cited. You see, your research is not in your head. Research is what you write out in the paper. So I'd be curious to see what you've written out, what your sources are, who you're referencing, what scholars you know have provided the knowledge that you're speaking of. But what you have in debates are a lot of claims with no verification. That, that's the problem. Firms that hire people, and when you look at the actual median wages compared to people that even have some college biggest education, regret, all of it, is me going all to of it, that's great for you, but for the average American, that's just that's not true. true. None of these numbers are found on average. You will okay. never find data that supports the idea that high school earners, on average, are earning college degree earners. Every Here's single stuff. person that. Yeah, that's true, and in fact, that's obvious. So, Destiny is pointing out something that is, you know, fairly obvious, and. Candace Owens is providing a feminine argument whereby they consider the individual story, the individual narrative, and individual person's experience as opposed to what the data set says. So she's saying, oh, for me, I could have went without college. And Destiny is retorting that, well, for most people, college is actually going to carry them farther. But in reality, if you're a real thinker, you'd be able to conclude that now, it might not be college that's adding the value to these persons. These are the individuals who are already of greater intellectual capacity and competence, and they happen to likely go to college and they're able to survive and thrive in college. So it's not college that adds the value. It's college that happens to be a common destination for those who already tend to have higher degrees of intelligence and competence. So you know, at some level, they're both right, but neither of them are quite sharp enough to unpack that. And I went to school with is not using the degrees that they paid. For, what did you what did you go to college they actually, for? What did I, uh, journalism. Isn't that what you so I actually like that she went to college for journalism. I think that's quite neat. And as much as she's in that field right now. So th that's pretty cool. I, I like that. Why he's making this face as though someone just, you know, uh, went ahead and got him up the backside with no Vaseline. I don't know you're doing right now what do you mean you're acting like you're a college dorm kid yeah and your catty insults towards people online make you seem like a high school mean girl what are you doing here what's going on i just did uh pbd patrick Beck david mm -hmm. they know you over there right <laughs> uh this is gross this is gross this kind of conversation here uh give me a second i think the i think the cleaning staff is here and you know what i could use a Nice little refresh on the place. So give me a second. Let me let these folks in. Hello. Hi. Hi. Please. Yes, please. Okay. Thank, you, Thank you. All right, folks, let's uh, go ahead and carry on here. Are um, you laughing? Maybe. Uh, I know I'm good. Do you know Adam over there? Yeah, so I'm saying I just asked Adam. He was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I know Adam. Me and Adam are cool. I'm not as much sure about the PVD guy. I'm pretty, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a guy. pretty far left guy, and I disagree with a lot of stuff they say. But pretty he's, crazy way, he's, so. They got both on that show. That's why it's so great. But I just did it something with Chris Cuomo. He couldn't be further left. That's what I just did. I yeah, I saw. It. What I want you guys to be aware of is that not one of these persons actually stand for anything that's inclusive of PBD. Um, Destiny, Candace, all of them, they're all actually friends. And this is why you find that there's such stagnation in American politics, because at the end of the day, whether you're talking about Democrat or Republican, they all agree with each other. You know, they're not that far apart. And that's why you don't have significant change. And furthermore, you see that they agree on the most critical things uh, mostly the things that lead us in the wrong direction. For example, you notice whether it's Democrat or Republican, America is an endless war, protracted war. They all agree on that. When it comes to taking away the, the freedoms of individual Americans, whether it's through the Patriot Act and spying on citizens, they all seem to agree on that. Whether it's in terms of securing our southern border, Trump talked about building a wall, but did immigration stop flatline with Trump? No, because the truth is building a wall is not necessary. All you had to do was put military assets on that border and kill on site, which would have been the most appropriate thing and completely reasonable because that is in fact an invading force. And so the truth is the Democrats, they wanna allow illegal immigration so that they can get a greater, voter, a greater voting block because Spanish speakers come in and they tend to, tend to vote left. And 
of course, that's for social benefits and things like that. And then the right, uh, they tend to allow the illegal immigrants to come in and work at low wages uh, in their businesses. So there's benefit for both. There are two heads on the same dragon is what I'm pointing out to you. I acknowledge uh, Nathaniel supporting the work. I also acknowledge uh, Charlie. Shout to Jabri with a baller alert. He sent um, some Abercrombie and Fitch stock. Okay, fascinating. He writes, what do these commentators actually do? Bruh, <laughs> you feel me? You know, since when should talking be a living or a contribution? He writes, sad how talentless many of these public figures have become. I agree with you there. I could not agree more. Carrying on. Uh, well, but then we bring on left guys is usually to roast the fuck out of them. So, no, that's not what happened at all. Oh, that might not have happened this time. That's what I've seen. When I had Anthony Weiner on, it was that. When I've seen other left-leaning guys go on, it was uh, that. I've never voted for a Republican, but I might vote Republican. I think Adam is fair. Yeah. I think Adam is fair generally from what I've seen, but he's like center at best. Something What's that? So I just laugh because it's funny because I don't. I'm not sure if those guys hate me or not. I've been on their show once. They this boy talk with his hands like he's Italian or something. Man, he makes me want to work out. I've been a bit under the weather, but this ball makes me want to work out looking at his arms. Man, good lord. Seem like cool people, but um, the Patrick guy has said kind of weird things about me or my fan base before. So it's kind of. You see, this is one of the things that I find to be despicable. It's like the Patrick guy. Bruh, you know that man's name. Stop playing games. Just say Patrick Bet David. That's his name. You don't have to pretend as though you don't know his name. We find it to be disingenuous. And that's the problem is that you have so much uh, phoniness. You're dealing with fake people. And so he's over here acting like he doesn't know the guy's name after going on the guy's show. Just imagine. It's, it's silliness. Kind of like a funny... Um... It's just a funny thing. There wasn't anything deeper about it. I oh, okay. No, I was just, I was just curious. I was mm -hmm. like, because you would go on a platform with someone on the right, presumably. Yeah, of course. Okay, because you said because well, I'm on the left when I asked you, mm -hmm. and I was like, what does that mean? Like, why people? We need more conversation. It doesn't mean anything, dummy. There's, there's no meaning to the left and right in America. They're all a part of the same system. People are pursuing their own power. So if you can get power, whether you're on the left or the right, you're going to do what maintains your ability to stay in power, which is yielding the corporate interests and lobbyists. Shout out to Quat coming in via Cash App, supporting the work. He writes, peace to the saints, tuition, much appreciation. May I also acknowledge Darius. He writes, will you go to Japan and South Korea to raise their birth rates and save their population? You know, I would be willing to do that, honestly. Absolutely. I'm, I'm willing to make my contribution. Uh, shout out to EJ. He writes, paying what I owe, peace to the saints. I also acknowledge Gwensley. He writes, okay, very good. Carrying on. It doesn't need to be, I'm on the left, I'm on the right. It's like, what do you actually think? You know, <laughs> what do you actually believe? Sure, I agree for sure. Yeah. Um, what's your, what are you talking about mainly over the past week or two? What's the stuff that's captured your attention, your eyes the most? <sighs> Man, I talk about everything on my show. I mean, obviously, I think the biggest topic for me has been the Diddy lawsuit. It's the craziest thing that's come out, I think, since Jeffrey Epstein. And it's definitely significant because a lot of the work that I do is... See, no, it's not significant. In fact, it's just gossip. And that's the problem. The average person is brain dead. So as a result, the most of the if information and entertainment you see is based on silliness and gossip. Is the Diddy allegation uh, relevant or important to the average person? Of course not. What's the likelihood that you're going to hang around celebrities? Zero percent was the likelihood that as a result of you not hanging around celebrities, you're going to be sexually assaulted or molested by a celebrity, 0%. Thereby, if you're able to pay attention to what is meaningful and relevant in your life, you'd find that this has no meaning at all. Uh, by the way, shout out to Gwensley. We are getting you added to the list uh, for the Book of Dark Truths uh, Summit. And I did forward that along to Jason at Marquettism.com, who does uh, keep the list. I look forward to seeing you. Uh, he writes... Um, What's the topic? Uh, all these aimless debates, I agree. There is no topic. That's the sad reality is that the viewer is so brain dead. The viewer doesn't even require that there be a debate topic. So what they're really doing is setting up two persons who's, who theoretically disagree and they want to hear them argue. Argue about what? Argue about anything. That's the reality of how brain dead the average person is. In fact, there is research that indicates IQ has been declining. So yes, people are becoming dumber over time. And certainly AI is not helping that. He writes, what's the end goal? 
besides clipped gotcha moments for each side's propaganda machine. Uh, not even a propaganda machine because none of these folks actually have ideas. It's really their, their money machine. That's what um, they're going toward. And there's nothing wrong with that except that I would prefer you be clear about what your purpose is, right? Like if you sell cigarettes, your purpose is not to uplift people. It's, a, it's to make money on an addictive product. And, you know, it is what it is. But what happens with these commentators is they, for some reason, have some uh, strange idea that they're helping the people. I mean, consider the fact that when I debated those two slores, they had the nerve to suggest that them going on podcasts was helping, you know, the plight of American women. It's like, stop it, dear, stop it. He writes also, never seen so much hype but behind two mediocre figureheads. Correct, right? Candace Owens is not good looking at all. She looks like a regular uh, Negro bedwinch. And uh, Destiny looks like the Mick Foley, the ugliest tub of lard you'd ever want to see. Neither of these persons are someone you'd say, you know, I'd like to look like this person. I'd like to sound like them. I'd like to imitate anything about them other than their earning. That's it. He writes, it's like a local weekend basketball league on prime time at this point, right? You get it. He writes, so sad that it makes you laugh. Peace to the saints. You ain't lying. So that's a very accurate analysis. Shout out to Brandon. He writes, peace to the saints, less work. Shout out to the real ones. Had the pleasure of meeting Brandon at the, uh, the men's trip. It, it was hilarious. Just quick story. Um, we went to this uh, particular site in Vietnam, which is a gorgeous uh, site. In fact, one of the best in the world, in my opinion. And uh, we take these buses, right? So I organize these large tour buses to get there. Everyone gets on the tour bus, but I think Brandon was a little bit tardy for whatever reason. And we all arrive on the tour bus. And then Brandon uh, sends us a DM like, yo, I'm here. We're like, bro, how'd you get here? This man then rented a motorcycle in Vietnam and peeled out on a motorcycle on an hour long trip and never rode a motorcycle before. So shout out to Brody making things happen. I love to see it. Indeed. Now I acknowledge DJ Fresh. He writes, uh, Peace of the Saints, I've been learning a lot of solid game from your content. Good work, play ball. I appreciate that. Shout out to Chad. He writes, going to be a good reaction. Good to see and hear your perspective. Peace of the Saints, I appreciate that. Shout out to Terrence. He writes, uh, send my question by PayPal. Okay. Um, earlier on. Okay, I don't see it. Uh, kick that back to me, Terrence. Uh, yeah, go ahead and send it to the email that's going to populate below because uh, I don't see it. So, so just send it to that email address and we'll we'll take a look at it. I was talking about just, or I guess really asking the question is what's happened to black culture? Because this is not the black culture that I grew up with. Uh, and mm -hmm. Shut up, Candice. You didn't grow up with any black culture, okay? There's nothing about you that black people find authentic. Furthermore, given your age, you were not old enough to exist within a a positive black culture. Positive black culture predates you. So what are you talking about? And furthermore, I don't want to hear a black female who has a white woman's hair talk about black culture when she doesn't even have enough respect for her black self to be herself. And why are you talking about black culture to a fat tub of lard like this, who clearly is not black? And I would even go as far as to say, does not like black people. The Diddy lawsuit potentially answers a lot of those questions. Oh, so. God. Can you, do you this woman is brain dead. Did she just try to connect one weirdo, one Skittle Guzzler's antics to black culture, which is a culture that largely despises Skittle Guzzling? Please stop. Shout to Luis, comes in by PayPal. He writes, Peace upon you, great saint. I pray for more happiness and much success because you deserve all of the treasures of our creator, um, Luis Alfredo Saint. Arismendi. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for the kind words. Carrying on. Say where you grew up. I grew up. I was born in White Plains, New York, and I grew up in Stamford, Connecticut. Okay. Um, I ain't gonna lie. I've never heard of either of these. Pl I've heard of White Plains, New York, but I've never heard of either of them being hubs of black culture, or I've never known them to be places with a lot of black people. I mean, I could be uninformed. What Can you catch us up on the P. Diddy lawsuit? I haven't been in this area what? as much. Are you kidding? My mind has been, I've done Israel-Palestine okay. for the last four years. Look at this stupidity. What? You haven't been paying attention to who this Skittle-guzzling rapper is molesting? Shut up. 
years or four months. In fact, I just want everyone to know in full disclosure, I'm ashamed of myself for covering this, but you guys like to see this. So here we are. And then like a whole bunch of red pill stuff. YouTube channel. Um, okay. And she started making allegations that Diddy said it ends. This is so and stupid. Jackson died. So it's now reopened all the Michael Jackson stuff. Uh, super interesting. A lot of stuff that I would say. This woman is a real bore to listen to. She has no meaningful change in inflection. She has no significant eloquence. And she's not much to look at. <laughs> we are surely being tricked here. She's an industry plant. Shout out to Terrence. He writes, Peace of the Saints. How did you meet your co-founder for Fletch? That's a great question. I met him. I actually hired him initially. And he was the CEO of a dev firm in India. And so I hired him. And as we were doing, or as I was doing deals for the business, I was getting investors who said, hey, we need you to have a technical co-founder and we want to meet them. So at that point, I renegotiated with Aditya and I said, hey, I know you're running this tech company and we're paying you for all of your services, but I'd love to bring you on as CTO. I'll cut you into some equity. Um, I want to fly you out. The team is going to be in Michigan. Let's meet. Let's build a relationship and let's do this thing. So we basically switched the structure from him operating as head of a, a dev firm and me paying his dev firm to do dev work to him being cut into equity and him operating as a CTO and basically utilizing his dev firm to do the work for Fletch. And it worked out really well. And he's a great businessman, very honorable, a kind soul, very spiritually centered. And we had a great relationship. And, you know, that's, I honestly don't think that's a story that can be recreated many times in as much as you know, he was a uniquely good person and, you know, hardworking and, uh, positive and, and caring individual. And those are important qualities when you're starting a new business because there'll be great struggles. And I remember um, one time when we were low on capital, we were going from Michigan to Chicago for a meeting, like Northern Michigan, Upper Peninsula to Chicago for an investor meeting. And money was super low. And I was like, look, man, I'm just going to knock out in the car for a couple hours and I'm going to continue driving to Chicago. I'm going to take this meeting with this venture capital firm and then we'll go from there. And he was like, well, why don't you stay at a hotel, get some high quality sleep? I was like, ah, that's not really in budget, bro. I was like, budget is looking thinner than Sean Paul's goatee hairs. And he was like, all right, let me just get this hotel for you. He's like, because I, I want you to get some good sleep. I, I want you to kill this meeting and health is important. So when you can have business partners like that, you know, you, you know, these people are not going to cheat you. These people are, are there for, of course, to make money, but for the adventure. And so it was a it was a really beautiful experience. I'm very thankful. He writes, I'm a junior transfer student in computer science, uh, majoring in a computer science major at a big state school and will be interning at Meta this summer. Congratulations. That's very prestigious. I like to make high caliber friends that I could build a tech startup with after I graduate next year. Any tips? Yeah, uh, come up with an idea and start working on something with it, with them. That's all there is to it. You know, get an idea, start working on it, even if it's not a great idea. You know, once you put your hands in the soil together with a, another person and they, they like the way you work, then you can do that on other projects. Uh, Seth, for example, we've done a lot of work together on various projects. You know, some you know, went well, some didn't. But, you know, we have such a good relationship that if I have a, a great idea, I call him up like, yo, Seth, I, I want to do X, Y, and Z. He's like, all right, cool. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. We start building right then and there. You dig? So um, that's what you want. And it, it just comes from working together. Shout out to Endless Apex. He writes, we out here. Wouldn't miss the Golden Bridge with my brothers. <laughs> there you go. And that's, and that's the gentleman who, who hopped on that motorcycle and, and peeled off on some speed racer shit. Um, shout out to Nikolaus. He writes, might we consider the posture of these two, the female displaying a more dominant and composed posture whilst the male appearing rather feeble and timid. This must be indicative of something. Yeah, I mean, even just the fact that her chair is higher, so she appears to be taller and bigger. Right. And then of course he's going to look puny. I mean, look at his arms. They're like the size of thin pipes, thin jello like pipes. DJ Berserk supporting the work. He writes, Peace of the Saints, Black Box Ordered, looking forward to the ism. And for th those of you who have not had the chance to read the Black Box, uh, I trust that you will enjoy it as much as the many uh, other people have, which is to say it has 
I think 400 five star reviews. Obviously, it's sold much more than that, but out of the people who have written reviews, they're all five star. Shout out to Giuseppe. He writes, Is female dark truths please? So one thing that would help me is if you don't write in uh, like with a capital letter for every word, that's more so something you do for a title, it just makes it harder to read. Um, so, and you write, is it a good or a bad thing? It just is what it is. That's life. Things, it, it is what it is. You get to decide how you feel about things, but you'd be wise not to feel. You'd be wise to take action and figure out how you can get on the strong side of any dynamic. A lot of proof presented in these documents. Like I said, there's a lot of photos included. And if what he is spelling out is correct, then it's basically a homosexual ring that works by blackmail. They host these, what he calls freak offs, and they drug people and they get them to sleep with a minor or do something you know that you wouldn't want publicized. And then they own you, right? Because it's like, well, we have you on camera doing this. And so you're going to say or do whatever I want. So very much, like the Jeffrey Epstein stuff. Gotcha. Are these in indictments or are these just like affidavits or statements to the media? Is any of the stuff like gone to court yet? It's or? the lawsuit that he filed. So we're reading the lawsuit okay. documents okay. directly. Is this, this is a civil lawsuit, I'm guessing? Yes. Okay. He's suing Universal Music Group. He's suing Lucy. So here's the thing. A lot of this, we need to look at it for what it is, which is people playing victim. I always remind you all to not engage in intoxicants, drugs, alcohol, coffee, things like this. Now, if you were one who didn't engage in intoxicants, one, you probably wouldn't be in the music industry, right? Because it's a filthy industry, the entertainment industry. But if you were and people invited you to a freak off, first off, it was called a freak off. You probably wouldn't want to go because you know that it's filled with Skittle guzzlers and you might not be one who guzzles Skittles. But say you did end up there for some reason and then all of a sudden they're like, bring out the cocaine. Uh, you're like, wait, hold on, player. And then bring out the fentanyl. You're like, whoa, bring out the meth. Whoa, that's methed up. I think I got to go. And you wouldn't use drugs. So you wouldn't find yourself in this situation. So the moment at which you voluntarily use drugs and then you end up doing something that is foolish, which is what is typical of those who are high, you know, you can't blame anyone but yourself. So you basically have individuals who are part of the elite uh, behaving irresponsibly which is typical, um, and then trying to avoid the consequences of their own bad behavior. This relates not at all to the lives of everyday people, and they shouldn't have any true interest in this. But uh, as most persons are escapists, and rather than deal with their low lot in life, they'd rather indulge in the, the fantasy of imagining that they're in a, at a party with P. Diddy, which is crazy to me. Seeing Grange, per, uh, you know, Personally, um, he alleges that Lucy and Grange and Diddy are in a relationship by saying it like they disappear into Diddy's room uh -huh. and for hours and like. Yeah, who cares? Anyways, um, via PayPal, Miles writes, Peace of the Saints, Mr. Burton, I have an off topic question. What is the suit style of the suit you wore in the winner's mentality video? The suit screams boss businessman mixed with war general. Also, uh, would this style be versatile in many business interactions and social gatherings? Well, that style is a, it's a Mandarin collar. Uh, it's a modification on a, a Mao suit, um, which was typically worn by Chinese communists. And so I basically put a Mandarin collar on a Mao suit. Um, and then I did it in a more traditional Western color, like a, a dark navy. And so, yes, you can definitely wear this in business uh, situations if it's an appropriate color, which would be black, gray, dark navy. You might be able to get away with dark green, but that's more military and it's already quite a militant style. So I wouldn't recommend that. Clearly, this kind of the thing you're going to have to have made from scratch. By the way, shout out to the ballers. Jabri writes, can't wait to hear uh, the everything at the uh, Book of Dark Truths Summit. He sent, sent some lithium stock. I'm very interested to, to check into these stock picks and understand why he selected these stocks. I actually went on a, a bit of a spree a couple of days ago, uh, scooping up a couple um, assets myself. Shout out to Jasper. He writes, uh, Candace divested from the black community way too soon. 
She should have stayed a bit longer to learn how to style her own damn hair. Peace to the saints. <laughs> Carrying on. Like, this is the stuff that I've seen. I was groomed for sex. Like, essentially, he wasn't a gay man, but then did he found him when he was young? These are the allegations he's making. Again, a lot of photos, like, of other rappers. He's listening to, <coughs> uh, like, Cuba Gooding Jr., who's a... Uh, an, uh, yeah, you're fine. There are, there are, okay, so there are like two kind of different ways of viewing this. Um, not the circumstance of living in the hood. I come from nothing. It's not that, that did not make me feel closer to the circumstances that I grew up in. And unfortunately, that explain the top down domination of this type of media popularity through all of our reality TV shows, all of our TikTok stuff, all of our YouTube videos, and the music industry. And then how can you explain that all happening worldwide? Sure. Like it feels like that. To try to explain this through, um, through boy, the, these two are not interesting. Through people that are exercising, and then the media tells you how great he wore the dress, and he's like, "If he said, tell me one situation where he didn't wear the dress wonderfully, when when he didn't wear the dress in a way that was amazing, it's because they have all agreed that this is the narrative." And then he talks about the fact that the record execs also own the publications that are saying that something is amazing or something is not amazing. And that is just. So here's what I would ask Candace if I were destiny and I was a reasonable person, which he is not, he is clearly an agent of uh, all things filthy. But I would say, well, Candace, if you feel so strongly about this, other than talking about it, what is one practical thing you've done? Uh, whether it's through the force of organizing or through the many millions of dollars you're scraping off of the backs of your brain dead uh, viewers, what is one practical thing you've done to counter this other than speaking about it? You see, because for example, just speaking about something doesn't remedy it. If I speak about a spill in the ocean, that doesn't clean the oil out of the ocean. You see, I might have to organize a team to actually get in the ocean and clean the oil out. So what have you done? It's plain old fashioned propaganda. So don't... And, so, I don't know countries. about different identities, but for passports, I imagine you can get that illegally or you can just get it from countries depending on citizenship okay. status. Well, but, he, he, but what I'm saying is that like for, for when we look at Epstein, right? Epstein was a billionaire, right? I why was he a billionaire? Why? I Because of trading or whatever he did? I'm not no. Totally sure. No, that's um, the question. No, nobody sure. knows why. Yeah, nobody, I don't know why. Yeah, but has, there's like a million, million different. Dollars. Sure. There's lots of people where I don't know how they made their money. Yeah. But to fill in the gaps of all of this with some. No, you should always know conspiracy. how somebody became a billionaire. That's like a good so first off, now I can see why Candace Owens is interesting to dumb people. It's because she doesn't use any facts. She uses speculation. It is well known that Jeffrey Epstein was a mathematics whiz. He was initially a math teacher, and then he was able to apply these skills to paper assets. He found some favorable uh, people who were favorable to him and had high net worths who also provided him money to manage. He was able to parlay that successfully and amass a fortune. And we know historically in paper assets, this is where people make huge amounts of money. So whether you're playing with derivatives or other less stable financial instruments, this is the, the big uh, game and scam and gambling scheme of the American upper class for the last hundred years. So we do know how he made a billion dollars actually. So just because you didn't do your research or you'd rather lie and pretend as though it's not clear how he made a billion dollars, that's the problem is spreading freaking lies, trying to make things seem like they're more interesting or mysterious or dark than they actually are. It's actually quite simple how he made his money. Not doing it, but understanding what he did is quite simple. And furthermore, when she says, oh, we should always understand how someone made their money, like, word, really? No, in fact, wealthy people really go out of their way to conceal their net worth, to conceal their assets. In other words, protect their assets. And also those who have unique methods to earning would for sure want to conceal those methods such that they're not duplicated at a level that would render them ineffective. So you have someone like Candace Owens who's only made a modest amount of money compared to Epstein by babbling her lips to dimwits. And at some level, there's probably a little bit of jealousy that he was able to leapfrog her in the way that he has in ways that she just doesn't understand. But 
I see increasingly, and even this is true with uh, the PBD podcast, you see these people who I believe they know that they're spreading conspiracy theories. They're spreading lies and misinformation, and they're doing it because lies are more interesting than the truth. You know, painting Jeffrey Epstein to be some like mysterious occult figure who amassed his money in untold ways is far more fascinating than saying, the guy had a unique talent for mathematics and applied it to paper assets and had wealthy friends that let him manage their money and he was able to multiply that into billions. It, it's a lot less fascinating than that truth. And so they utilize these lies. And this is precisely why it's important that someone like me is able to give meaningful context and break down the truth of the matter because it seems as though um, for views and clicks, it's much more interesting for a commentator like a Candace Owens to have something creepy to talk about rather than the, the hard facts. Shout out to Mr. Thompson supporting the work via Cash App. May I also acknowledge via Super Chat, shout out to Mike Lee, right? <coughs> right, paying what I owe, long overdue, appreciate it. Shout out to Drip Lord Entertainment, right? Paying what I owe for it has been too long. Recovered from surgery and I'm going... And I'm in good spirits, peace of the saints, to the floral camping. That's a beautiful thing. Happy to hear that you're in good spirits. Shout out to Abu Hub supporting the work. May I acknowledge the bowlers? Uh, shout out to Giuseppe. He writes, how to have a healthy dynamic. When I'm in a long-term relationship with a woman, I personally want a lasting and fruitful relationship with a woman. I just want my relationship to last with a woman. Well, I think... The first thing is being able to select the correct woman that is values aligned comes from a good family. And then also to be able to observe red flags early and to escape. Well, what are some red flags? Well, here's one. When you're walking, she doesn't keep pace with you. Here's another one. You ask her, hey, what do you want out of your life? And she doesn't mention family. She doesn't mention a husband. She starts talking about her career. That lets you know that you're easy to replace and you're not the goal. You should be her goal. If she says family, then the husband is the key to that. So you need a woman who comes from a good family where people don't get divorced, who has family as her ultimate goal, and who is not an undercover feminist. And you can assess if she's a feminist, not by her words, but by her deeds and habits. So wishing you much success. A very easy thing. Like, you should, should just be like, I became a billionaire and you have no idea how. Like, I'm like, sure there are tons of people who are like, I that sold the product. You know why Elon Musk has money. You know why Jeff Bezos has money. You should not. And look at this woman basically saying, Because I'm ignorant, there's something wrong with this guy. Because I'm ignorant, there, he did something that was not right. This is just sheer stupidity. In fact, it's a poor person's mentality. And her, as someone who has money, she's appealing to the masses who don't have money, and they would like to believe that behind every great fortune is a great crime. And poor people would like to believe that because it makes them feel better about being in poverty because they get to take a moral position to say, well, I'm not willing to commit crimes or do wrong to get money at any cost. And that's what Epstein did, and that's what all these others did, which is actually not the case. Epstein seemed to make his money on the up and up. Now, were his sexual behaviors on the up and up? Clearly, they were not. Not say we can't connect the dots on how this person became a billionaire that was able but to purchase filings an Filings aren't always going to be public that like, oh, well, I can figure out exactly why this person became a billionaire. <laughs> if they don't work in like public traded companies or something, how will you ever know? There's no way you're going to know that. He did. Then what's the question? The, 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 Look at these two it's not a question. It's Look just nobody understands. They both sound stupid at the same time. How is it when you're arguing different positions, you both sound stupid at the same time? That doesn't even make any damn sense. At some point, one of you needs to sound like you have a superior position versus the other one. But they're both so damn brain dead, they at the same time sound like imbeciles. This is comedy. Understands why Jeffrey Epstein or his brother have billions of dollars. Well, what, you just said he... Did he have a ton of shares in publicly traded companies? Look at her. What do you mean? Did he have a ton of Like when we ask for instance, like, so slowly. here's a question. Do you know how Jeff Bezos made his money or how Elon Musk made his money? 
I know that Think Jeff Bezos that. created Why Amazon, and I know that Elon Musk has created a ton of things. Tesla, you got Starlink. Okay, kind of. So and that lets you know how uninformed she is. So you want to talk about Elon Musk, and you're going to start first by saying he created Tesla. This is the problem with these dumbass, uninformed people. First off, Tesla is damn near heavy industry, right? It's a very expensive industry to go into the car making automotive industry. It's extraordinarily expensive to prototype. And there's no way in hell anyone comes from nowhere and starts a car company. You must already have a fortune. This dumb broad should have first stated PayPal. That's where he created his fortune, which enabled him to pursue greater things that require significant amounts of startup capital and trust. But she starts off with Tesla, which is the thing that commoners know about, not people who are sophisticated or people who are you know, steeped in business history or innovation. And that just lets you know the low quality of her thinking. Pathetic. Not really. Bezos made his money because of the appreciation of shares of Amazon that he had a huge stake in, right? And, and Elon Musk made a lot of his money. Initially, it was on PayPal and a couple of okay, ventures. And then because go. he had a huge... Look at, look, at, uh, look at this guy actually giving some meaningful points. Shout out to him. Uh, T. Vales writes, first time supporting. Much appreciation. Shout out to the real ones. May I also acknowledge uh, Jacori, who just joined Boss University. We welcome you to this thing of ours and drop the link for boss university because it's a critical piece of education that enables happiness enables you to lead yourself be more disciplined and also be worthy of leading others equity stake mm -hmm. in uh in spacex and tesla especially that's where they made their money is ownership of stock of publicly traded companies that's why so we can look at those people we can say we know how they made their money so did i don't think epstein had massive shares in publicly traded companies, did he? So he wouldn't have made it. Now imagine you're listening to people who have never started businesses trying to explain how businessmen have amassed wealth. I find it comical that these two persons, in this case, Destiny doesn't even have a university degree, has never started a proper business with any significant number of employees. He's trying to explain how a tech mogul has amassed a fortune. I think this is something perhaps I'd be more qualified to talk about. Now, number one, he's suggesting that uh, Elon Musk could have only amassed wealth through having a significant number of shares in a publicly traded company. Well, there are many ways that you could have amassed wealth before a company went public. And even if your company never went public and stayed private, for example, Trump has a number of private companies. There's something called sales and profitability. Yeah, you could have a private company that never goes public that is doing significant revenue with good profit margins. So these are the things that let you know you're dealing with people who are guessing. And the problem is when you have a destiny who's not very bright at all, but the person's listening to him are even less bright, the things that he says seem like they could be reasonable even when they are not. They're misinformed. Shout out to Abdi supporting work, the work now. So acknowledge Hannah. Uh, she writes, first super chat, sorry to get off topic, but had to ask. I watched a video with you stating the hierarchy of different types of women. How can I be an everyday girl and desirable, valuable to a man? Well, I don't have the context of the hierarchy that I spoke of uh, in the video. So just taking what you've written here, the best way to be, and I don't think being desirable to a man should be the goal. Uh, men have many desires, but really you should want to be a woman that a man wants to hold on to for all time. And the thing that is going to get you that position is service. When you can serve a man in great humility and be willing to help him push on all of his ends, an honorable man will never let you go and he will honor you for a lifetime. You see, the problem is sometimes a woman might serve a man who's not honorable or a woman doesn't know how to be humble and, and engage in humility or she's trying to run the program too much. For example, I'm in Singapore right now. There's a young lady I, I've been dealing with off and on for some time, gorgeous woman, but she thinks that she's going to run a program. So she says, oh, hey, can we hang out? And I say, no, we can hang out on this day at this time. And she said, oh, well, what about this day and this time? No, 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 no. That's not what I offered you. She, she's not humble enough to be flexible. Whereas I have a, another woman who I would honor for a lifetime. She's humble enough that when I'm very busy with my work, and she says, hey, I want to go out to dinner. Would you like to go out? It's been a long time since we've gone out. We've been staying home for a month. I've been cooking three meals a day for an entire month. Can we go out? I say, yeah, I'm very busy. However, let's go to this restaurant. Would you mind going there by yourself 
show up, order both of us food, and I'm going to show up right when the food arrives. Why? So I don't have to sit there and take the time to order or wait for the food. And she's humble enough to say, sir, yes, sir. And she's happy to do it. And she doesn't feel embarrassed like, oh, I had to sit in a fancy restaurant by myself, look like I got stood up. No, she's humble enough to do that and to make that sacrifice because she's about me. Because she's so about me, I'm all about her. If she ever needs anything, it, it will be granted to her no matter what it is. Whereas this other woman, she's more so like quid pro quo. Like you got to give me something to give you something. It's like, no, love, that it ain't going to work like that. You hear me? So learn how to serve an honorable man. So step one, figure out how to select an honorable man. And step two, throw yourself into service. Thank you for that question. Shout out to Chad, supporting the work. He writes, fascinating. They do the same thing uh, with you saying you are scant. Uh, just to justify their own deep, dark thoughts. and insecure. Right, exactly. Thought bots having the audacity to shame others. Right, exactly. It's like they're, they're just making up things. It's really a sad thing. Shout to Crowned King. He writes, thanks for giving us consistent gain. Sir, yes, sir. Do and you I actually know? look into the Epstein case or are you just, because I can't tell right now if your thing is just to be contrarian. Okay, hold on. No, I'm, be, I'm being serious. No, I'm asking you because it yeah. seems like you're just like, whatever your position is. I'm oh, she's getting mad because he's disagreeing. Oh, okay, well, you're in a debate, love. Being contrarian is the actual point of why we've gathered here. It's called a debate, which means that one person has to take one side and another person has to take the other side, little dummy. You see, that's the problem. And this is like quite another reason, you know, certain personality types should not be in certain fields. Because this woman just got mad because he's disagreeing with her. Oh, he's not allowed to disagree with you? He can't be contrarian in a debate? It's the whole point of a debate, you dimwit. I'm going to take the opposite, and I'm going to say something really quickly and try to say, well, how do we know? Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, that's actually quite boring. Sure. I you understand. know what I mean? Like, so it's like, dude, like, dude. Like, Love, you're both boring. Neither of you have talent. Like, let's actually have a real conversation because tons of stuff is happening right now. A lot of stuff is being exposed, right? Mm -hmm. People are for the first. She said tons of stuff is happening right now. That's true. Now, let me remind you guys of how you're being distracted. This should be funny to those of you who are intelligent. Tons of stuff is happening. Right now, the US dollar is declining as a reserve currency for the world. It used to be that the United States dollar is used to trade major commodities, you know, oil, barrels of oil, and, and foodstuffs, and various critical goods around the world. And now you have the Russians, the Chinese, the, the Indians, they're using uh, their own currencies to trade these goods, which is displacing the United States dollar and American hegemony. That's going on. That'll cause Americans eventually to see less value or the American dollar to decline and thereby it'll eat away at your savings. Inflation has been going on at a crazy rate. Our president can't stay awake, which lets us know that our democracy is a fraud because he can't possibly be running the place. Yeah, things are going on, Candace, but you would like to discuss who Diddy is having butt sex with. Candace, you would like to discuss Jeffrey Epstein, who last I checked is dead. So you are a mere distraction when you're suggesting that things are going on in the world, like, I don't know, two major wars that could lead to World War III? Yes, you're not talking about that. You're talking about the sexual behaviors of a dead man. So yes, Candace, things are going on and you're serving to distract us from the real things that are going on. It's a pity that anyone would listen to this kind of a fool. Shout out to Robert, he writes, proudly paying tuition. I appreciate the real ones. First time able to grasp a theory that finally makes sense, right? It finally makes sense. It makes sense that there is a black male ring operating in DC because we don't understand why we keep sending our politicians to DC and then it's like they completely serve somebody, anybody other than the American people, right? So when that Jeffrey Epstein case got exposed, and if you were following the same thing that people that defend Trump are saying, the justice system is corrupt, right? That these people are responding and being motivated by things like the LAPD's involvement that night in writing a fake police report, if his allegations are true and he had photos and said that he was the person that- Oh God. Well, she was just saying, I think rape is just like, you know, when someone thinks you're sexy. So it's like, so did Trump just think you were sexy? She had no witness. I've said this over the years, uh -huh. that there's like some sort of gang that's operating in Hollywood. And I would just like to see these allegations play out, you know? Done another one of his big rants about the deep state and blah, blah, blah. I think I asked him, I was like, well, what do you want your listeners to do? And it was the first time I ever heard him be quiet for more than five seconds because he had no answer. So I'm curious for you. Um, well, that, that's a good point, Destiny. He finally asked a commentator about action and commentators are not about action. So of course you're gonna hear silence and 
you know, the great irony is that if you were to ask Destiny right back that question that he asked whoever he's speaking of, he'd have nothing to say either because he's a video game player, right? And I find it just quite laughable that an adult male would even admit to playing video games. I frankly find it to be embarrassing and pathetic. When you talk about this overarching stuff, you want to bring people's attention to it. What is like a Candace Owens listener supposed to take from that? And what are they supposed to do in the real world, I guess, to like fight against some of the yeah, stuff? Yeah, I mean, I, I always tell people. Hey, shout out to Destiny. This boy's been listening to the Saint the Center. He's starting to use my talking points. Uh, that's good. I'm glad to see that the ism is spreading worldwide. They can do like one of the biggest pushes is telling parents that they that they should be involved in their kids' education. And you saw telling, that. That was, um, that was conservatives who brought forth that. Okay, so she said one of the biggest contributions is telling. What is telling? That's more talking. You see, human beings, for them to improve behavior, they don't need telling. They need training. They need conditioning. You see, that requires courses. That requires um, in, you know, action. So telling is just what you're already doing. It's commentary. It's babbling. So in other words, Candace, you're doing nothing. Thank you. Understood. That movement of parents actually showing up and demanding changes mm -hmm. um, in the textbooks and finally recognizing how far things had gone because we allowed the Department of Education to just spike. Them. Specifically, um, what do you what would you think are the big like two or three things that the black community in the United States needs to do to kind of save itself from? So I don't think that we can ask Candace Owens about the black community just because she's black. We know that there's levels to things, right? Now, there's some people who are more or less black, right? There's some people who are more or less regarded among uh, the black community. So, for example, in terms of the white community, I, I don't think I would ever feel just in asking a white person in America about the white community. That would be strange. So why you feel justified in asking a, a random black chick who mostly is in the midst of non-blacks about the black community is quite peculiar. And if she was intelligent, she or honest, how about that? She'd say, well, let's be real here, Destiny. I don't spend much time around black people. The masses of blacks in America rebuke my message and rebuke me. So I probably shouldn't speak on this. And, you know, people like Destiny would love for a Candace Owens to speak for the black community, right? Shout out to Troy. He writes, new supporter, appreciate the wisdom. I Thank you. Shout out to Troy. I acknowledge cash money. He writes, got boss university. Uh, how do I become more mature? Set some goals that you're serious about. You know, get serious in life. You know, if you seriously want a good woman, you seriously want to make some money, you will leave the behaviors of a child. A child can't have a good woman and maintain it. A child can't have wealth and maintain it. Um, yeah. The whole of you know, fatherless children and welfare consumption and abortion and everything else that they're kind of stuck in right now. The first yeah. thing I think is is to educate yourself about where it's all coming from. I think black See, when he starts making these claims about uh, the black people, uh, she should actually challenge him on that and say, well, what are the numbers on this? And is this trending uh, with blacks or is this also starting to be the true narrative of whites as well? That's the fascinating piece is that in terms of illegitimacy in the family, absence of fathers, we're seeing that uh, white families are trending in the same direction. So now it's not a, a black issue. Uh, we need to actually take a greater study of the overall culture and how it's you know changing things. So he's basically putting forward a very old story um, lets you know he's not very well versed in this. And the sad reality is she's not smart enough to press him on this. And that's because she herself doesn't have the facts. Black Americans. And let me go back. You can see her looking off into the distance thinking. Look at this. This is a thinking face. Look at this right here. That's her thinking face. She's thinking. Neither of them know the answer. Neither of them are sharp. These are not quick witted, quick minded people. I was talking right now. The first thing I think is is to educate yourself about where it's all coming from. I think black Americans need to be educated on black history, not in the Democrat textbook way. So when she says black Americans need to be educated on black history, I, I hope he says, okay, great. What's the most two most important things in black history that black Americans should know, right? Let's see. But in the real way of understanding where all these initiatives came from, because a lot of times black Americans are asking the government to solve what the government created, which welfare programs obviously destroyed the black family. So that has nothing to do with black history, you fool. So you just said black history, and then you start talking about welfare programs, which is not black history. So let's see if destiny pushes back at all. Well, what are the most important things to understand in black history? And how are welfare programs now affecting whites? Because we're seeing an increase of illegitimacy in white families.
Let's see if there's any pushback. You see, often there's not. And that's why they love a, a Candace Owens speaking about Blacks, because she says the things that a lot of whites who despise Black people would like to say. And you know, some of these things can be reasonable, but mostly they're just inaccurate or it's half the story. And so there's no pushback right now. All of a sudden they agree. And it was the intention of Lyndon Baines Johnson to do that no because pushback. he wasn't a bad racist and spent decades in the Senate voting against. I find it funny when you call a, a you know a United States statesman a racist, like that makes them unique. It's every measure <laughs> to give black Americans any measure of freedom until he was basically forced with a figurative bullet to his head to sign the Civil Rights Act. Um, uh, There's no interruption from destiny, no pushback. They're on the same page. So some calm nationally. So I think, first of all, everything begins with education. And I think that people that are nefarious understand that, which is why the 70% illiteracy rate that we're seeing across inner city communities is, is in my opinion, by design. 40% of students now can't pass a literacy exam. By design. Okay. Shout out to Mike. He writes, Candace told PBD her husband has been friends with Andrew Tate for years. Saying you're right, all of them are friends behind the scenes and make money off of the average ignoramus, sassin or nothing. Exactly, exactly. Excluding Black America. When we say by design, who would want that? Who people that want to control you? There's a reason why when we had slave codes, um, slaves weren't allowed to learn how to read. When you're not educated, when says people who want to control you, yeah, which people, dummy? That's what he's asking. Which people? anything I tell you becomes your reality. If I, I can understand that, but like that, but slaves like worked and did stuff, right? Yeah, I feel yeah, like so do the American, so do, so do Americans. Every day we go to work and our money gets this so that they are emotionally reactive because I mean, look, I have children. I have a three year old. I, I know what it means to be. They are stupid. And, and that's the magic. Make black people specifically, I guess, illiterate so mm -hmm. that they are easier to manipulate, even though I seriously doubt these people even vote that much. And then the other is to make people the most literate by sending them to college and have them read. They're not the most literate. That's what I'm telling you. They are not the most literate. You think people that graduate because, with college yes. degrees can't read well? Yeah. I, what I'm telling you is yes. That's what I'm telling you. They're not the most literate. We're, what would I look up we to are verify not, that are, if I wanted to see like- You got to do, do the research in your I own time. I have done the research. Okay, I'm, I'm, word, word, word. Okay. So she just said that people with university degrees are not literate. I don't think anyone believes that. And then Destiny, he's one of those persons, and unfortunately you see this a lot, when he wants to drive home a point, he starts lying about research that he's done. So let's rewind it so you can hear him reference the research he's done. Yeah, he's not gonna name a study, he's not gonna name a think tank, he's not gonna name a scholar. He just, there's some research he's done. You think people that graduate because, with college yes. degrees can't read well? Yeah, I, what I'm telling you is yes. That's what I'm telling you. They're not the most literate. We're, what would I look up we to are not, verify we are, that if I wanted I, to see like- You got to do, do the research in your I own time. I have done the research. Like, I'm, I'm happy to- true. So he said, I have done the research on my own time. Well, if that's the case, then you should be able to say, oh yeah, you know, Dr. Watkins in an article in the, you know, the Journal of Science and this and that or the other, published an article in 1978 stating X, Y, and Z. But he's never going to do that. So you basically have two persons who are completely unprepared and unqualified arguing against each other. And you have imbeciles sitting and watching it as though it's like, you know, high level intellectual sparring. It's laughable to people who actually have brains, but this is the era that we're in. And that's precisely why whatever the art form is, you know, there's the version of that art form that appeals to the masses. And then there's the version of that art form that appeals to the elite within that form. What I'm saying is this, the most popular rapper is never the best rapper, right? The most popular rapper is the one that appeals to every imbecile you know, in the country. But then there's the, the rapper's favorite rapper. And being that rappers really do it, they like the guy who's like the sharpest at it. So I'd rather be your favorite rapper's favorite rapper because that's like the apex of the skill. But the most profitable thing is to be everybody's favorite rapper. So, you know, go for what pays. I can't hate these people for trying to get their bread together. But at the end of the day, you can look, you can look and listen. And like, these people are idiots. These are legitimate idiots. But what do you, what do you mean? It's not true. Just what, what I mean? said, as, just a people, as just, an owner of a college degree, median wage, that doesn't right mean, to that person, just because is you like, own a, mm -hmm. you can go to college for four years and spend a hundred thousand dollars getting a degree in gender studies. 
please do not tell me that you believe that that person is educated first of all, or on, highly wait, literate. Well, like it's, more it's, than it's, half it's, it's, a degree is awarded or awarded for STEM related things. Number one, number two, a hundred thousand dollars is a way over the average we're paying for any degree. Well, that's what I paid. And number, so I'm just. What did you go to school for? And this is the whole point. Like this is very womanly arguing in a bad way. Well, that's what I paid. Well, you dumb bitch. You don't represent all of America's college students. You don't represent the average or the median. You imbecile. So what happened in your individual case is irrelevant. So why you would bring that up, Sherry Nistic and self-absorbed. Well, I paid 100,000. Okay, well, you dumb bitch. The average person pays 40,000. So why would we talk about you? You're what's called an outlier, dummy. And this is what we have to deal with. And, and people have the nerve to call her smart. How, Sway? How? Or the average, and you, as, long, as far as I'm concerned, you can look this up. Look at her. But I'm if you are going to school, you're probably spending in America probably. about thirty thousand dollars a year, minimally, if you're out of state. Isn't the average can amount? Just of look it up. You got uh, Google, right? Look at this dumb bitch. She says minimally, if you're out of state, you dumb bitch. Most people are not out of state. Most people are not going to college out of state. That's the minority. So what she's doing right now is she's trying to misconstrue things intentionally just so that she can be right. Yeah, she's misinforming us just so she can be right. That's sad. You know, it really shows integrity when you can back down and say, you know what? I misspoke or I misstated that or I wasn't right. You're right. It's okay. It's pathetic. What, like, what, the, what state are we in? Isn't the what state are we in? Miami? Let's, I mean, let's go to you. Look up University of Florida. Pardon. What state are we in? Florida. Yeah. Go to University of Florida. Out of tuition rates. Because what do you mean? Hundred thousand dollars sounds about right. Yeah, but we're looking at. So one, this is for twenty-eight thousand six hundred and fifty-nine dollars out of state. Correct. Thirty thousand so, dollars. Yep. So one, this is the uh, out of state tuition. Yes, that's what I Number just said. Number two, hold on. This is the sticker price. Nobody pays this for school. You've got Pell grants. You've got different types of students. That's a fact. Destiny's correct. But let's see if he's smart enough to point out that the overwhelming majority of people are not out of state. Age, you've got tons of different scholarship initiatives. Very, 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 very few people so actually pay. I'm right, but price. you're trying to make me wrong. No, you're wrong. So no, I, no, no, I, I paid that you're price. Right. No, no, what I'm I saying paid that price, so I, saying... I paid back my loan. So you're not going to convince me that very few people are paying this. My sisters paid that price and they paid back. The, so you, you're just saying like, and yeah. This is what you guys watch. She's using examples of me and my sister. Wow. Wow. Honestly, this is why I don't fear dying because I should not have to exist on the planet Earth with these personalities. Yes, my granted, my school was more expensive. It was, I think, thirty five thousand dollars. There you go. The average twenty nine thousand. So if we look at if we you look can't at just the say average, you were right, sure. Candace. So fifty one percent. You're of, not going to get hurt. Yeah, so fifty one percent of bachelor's degrees for students graduate with an average of twenty nine thousand four hundred dollars in student loan debt. Right. So that's only 51% of people, I guess, that acquired debt. And then their average debt is about $29,400. Are you, not are you, I don't get what the point is of you doing this. The point are, are you trying that, to say? The, the point I'm saying is that one, the sticker price for an out of state tuition school is not what. And the funny thing is, you're talking to a college dropout about the cost of college, right? So he doesn't even have it on an experiential base. And he's not smart, smart enough or studious enough to be able to contend with her bad argument, which is so clearly bad. Sad. Folks, I'll give you a little bit of time if you want me to carry on. I'm happy to do so. I'll go ahead and take a pause for the cause. And if you would like to support while cutting out the Google Corporation, which is a censorship corporation, you can use the information below.
Saints. Um, shout out to Gwensley. He writes, Mr. Burton, can you look up the definition of literate so we can further expose how ludicrous and insane her argument is? For any uh, for anyone, she said that the majority of graduates are not literate. <laughs> yes, you did not mishear that. You heard that correctly. Yes, I'd be happy to look up the definition of literate. Definition, literate. Yeah, it's it's really sad. It's sad. I'm going to go ahead and share this page for you all, too. Literate, able to read and write. Yeah, so when she claims that university students, university graduates, in fact, are not literate, I mean, the, she's telling tall tales. But this is the, the quality or lack thereof of your political commentators whom you all somehow are willing to listen to. I find them to be woefully boring, uninteresting, and dishonest. Shout out to Gwensley. He writes, you probably shouldn't carry on. <laughs> you seem to be in physical pain as you're reviewing this, bro. I'm telling you, mate. The, the, these jokers are characters. Man. I, I can't even lie to you. This is the one of the things that reminds me that I'm thankful for mortality. You know, if I was an immortal and I couldn't die, I'd like I, it'd really be a curse. Like I'm glad that there is an exit to this sick world. Shout to Carter. He writes, peace to the saints, tuition. Appreciate you. Now, so acknowledge. He writes, um, we'll catch the replay. Let's hear some boss talk. <laughs> you dig in a real way. Okay. Yes, indeed. A little bit of boss talk, and then we're going to get up out of here. You know, shout out to, to this resort because they, they gave me the huge TV. They gave me two of them. So he's going to wrap this up with a little bit of boss talk a little bit of inspiration. They gave me the huge TVs. And you know what? From a design perspective, they could have saved money and made it so that you can rotate the TV, right? So you can turn that TV and then it would go into the bedroom, right? And then you could just rotate it and turn it. But instead they're like, nah, we just put two TVs. Respect. And of course we got the gorgeous view. We got the gorgeous view, of course live like a saint. You dig? And me, I'm all about bathrooms. Also, just side note, what is this chair? I don't, I don't know what this chair is about. Maybe that's like some Asian stuff I don't fully understand. Um, but of course, we got the, the bathtub, which is my favorite. You know, the his and hers. You know, I like to be dolo, though. That's just me. And then the wardrobe. And what I really appreciate and what the apex of luxury is, the apex of luxury is options options. So they're like, yeah, you could wear this bathrobe or you could wear this bathrobe. It depends on how you feel. You dig. Live like a saint. Until next time. Let us end this with our tradition, the creed of assassin. Repeat after me with full conviction, knowing this is true of you. The creed of assassin. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable and I am going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time.